I am featured on an amazing summit called the Intrabiz Summit alongside Dr. John D. Martini, Sharon Lecter, Evan Carmichael, Rob Moore, Les Brown, Brian Tracy, 30 of the world's leading industry authorities over a three-day period, November 25th to November 27th. And it's all going to be about how to rise to thrive going into 2021. So looking forward to seeing that. It's free to join. If you want to pre-purchase some of the audio recordings, use the promo code intro AS10, intro AS10. And uh, we'll see you on the Intrabiz Summit. Take care. Bye-bye. This is the Game Changers Experience. Deep dive conversations with leading business disruptors, Olympic athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and influencers from around the world. This show will teach you insights about the winning principles in mindset, productivity, marketing, branding, entrepreneurship, business strategy, and more. Hosted by Productivity Authority, business strategist, former elite athlete, author, and public speaker, Adam Strong. Hello, everybody, and a welcome to the Game Changers Experience podcast with myself, Adam Strong. And I am joined in on the show today with a good friend of mine called Dario Cucci. And now Dario is also known as the sales mind shifter. We'll talk a little bit about that, how that works uh, uh, during our, our show. Uh, he's also a best-selling author. He's got two amazing books where he's actually got a multitude of different books, but two of the most popular ones that he's got is called The uh, Turn Customers Into Profit, but also Crossroads Into Clarity, which is, a, which is a great book. You definitely need to check that out. Dario is also the CEO of Entrepreneur Growth. I've ju- been, I've known Dario for probably the best part of about three or four years. And what I love about Dario is that he organizes different events for entrepreneurs and I've been a part of that experience speaking at his events, which I'm truly blessed about. And uh, what I really love about Dario is that he really comes from a place of serving rather than selling. You know, and that's what this show is all about, right? It's about really kind of adding big value to people, but, you know, without expectations. And that's what I really love about Dario. He's got a great uh, heart, great soul, and you definitely need to connect with him. So Dario, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Awesome. So I know that you've been in sales for, I think you best part of about 20 years, if, if I'm not mistaken. And I know that it kind of all started for you in Australia, but I want you to kind of enlighten us about how it all started. You know, where, where did it all started from where back in Australia? Well, I mean, I've been in sales uh, now almost, I'd say 25 years, I think. But it started in Australia, like I believe sales is just part of the outcome of the conversation that you're holding. So when I first moved to Australia, I used to work in hospitality and retail. And you have that conversation in person. And later on, I was for almost five years a personal trainer and the same thing there. You have the personal connection with the person in person without it being over the phone. It's a totally different way of communication that's happening when you are in rapport in person and selling your service to when you're doing it over the phone and people don't know you. Mm -hmm. And so... My journey on doing that started when I started when I worked with uh, Anthony Robbins' team in Australia for his events like Unleash the Power Within, Day to Destiny, and things like that. And that's when I started getting into sales, selling uh, mentorships and you know um, self development programs over the phone, mm. which is a totally different ball game in comparison to in person selling. Because, first of all, it takes a lot longer to establish that trust that you normally have in person straight away. Because you see the person, you go, oh, I, I like this person, and you, you build on that. Whereas over the phone, you just, you, you know, you're slowly getting into that building rapport, building trust, asking the right questions. And because the person doesn't see you, you need to somehow build that instant rapport if you can without overcompensating without being too pushy that's the challenge and that's how my career started ultimately when it comes to the self-development industry and selling their you know selling trainings and coachings over the phone yeah cool did you have a mentor or someone that you looked up to in terms of like the beginning journey for you was there someone that you kind of could reach out to and how i mean what sort of impact did that have on you 
To be honest, at the time, I didn't really thought that much about having a mentor or coach or anything. It's, it's like what happened was at the time, I one person I learned from was Dr. Tad James when I done, when I'd done my certification as an NLP master practitioner and learn about timeline therapy and about hypnosis and all that and next to NLP. But when I started in, you know, selling services like, you know, Tony Robbins and those kind of trainings, my mentor, you can say, was my supervisor. So she was the person that I went to when I felt like I cannot go on or I don't know what, what else to do. And I think that is sort of like where I got the feedback from, plus the team that I worked with. But she was the one person that I went to when she is very like spiritual, down to earth, but also very kind. And which helped me a lot, to be honest, because there, there were times where I felt like I don't know what else to do. I mean, I literally, you apply the NLP strategies and communication strategies from questions and stuff like that. But sometimes when people are just rude, there is nothing you can do when people just hang up on you. You know, you can be as smart as a whip, but uh, when people just hang up and don't want to listen, there's nothing you can do. And on the other hand, it's also, it's something that it goes hand in hand with the marketing. So if the marketing is non point, then the phone calls need to be a lot more, how do I put it? They need to be a lot more adaptive, a lot more caring in the beginning without it being pitchy. And because people have not yet learned about the benefits or what it will do for them, so therefore, there is less, less of the basis has been established, meaning you need to do a lot more work. And the problem, even if the, if the marketing is done well, the problem we have today is that we get inundated with marketing messages. So most of us don't actually read what's written if it's a long email. If it's a uh, video, I mean, studies show long videos are hardly watched anymore. The longest people watch a video is five to 10 minutes. Longer videos aren't being watched unless they paid for it. And um, there is a specific purpose behind that video. So most people, when you send out a video message, it needs to be short to the point. The shorter, the better, because people don't have time. So that's what they get distracted so easily. So it's actually, it's a real difficult, I say we are in a really difficult time right now when it comes to communication. It's a big issue that needs to be addressed because people have not, don't know anymore how to communicate well. Abbreviations are used everywhere. Hashtags are used everywhere. And the deeper conversations get lost. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I know we were talking about this uh, the other day um, about the fact that you know, the importance of communication. And we were talking about, you know, relationships and things like that. But I think more importantly, we were also talking about, you know, especially when people get what I call desperate or they come under stress and anxiety where they might try a different sales tactic, whether it be direct messaging, whether it be spamming your emails or whatever it is. But what do you think that people really go wrong when it comes to the actual sales process? Well, I think that the biggest problem that we have today is we, we are under the impression that we don't have time, whereas we all do have time. It's just a matter of where do I put my focus? Where is my focus? Where do I, how do I apply myself with that focus in, in that sense? And this is where the average person, no matter if, they got, if they're a small business owner or an entrepreneur, go wrong. They feel like they need to rush through things. Mm. Um, they feel like they have to shortcut the conversations quite often. And they feel like they need to literally pitch straight away their offer. The problem with that is, yes, you can do that. It is a, you know, it's a proven technique to pitch straight away, to get straight away to the point and then ask a qualifying question the problem that most people don't have is when you go straight into conversations like that, they become defensive. 
So you're not really getting to know the person, nor will you get to know what the value is in it for them. So you might tell them the value, but you really don't know if that is what they're looking for. So you might, you know, get to the point and they then go, yes, why not? Or they might make an excuse as a reason why they don't want to go move ahead because they don't want to lose time. So that is the biggest problem we have today. The perception of time is that we need to rush through things. Whereas we used to actually, even like a customer used to, make their time on the phone and have a, de- have a decent conversation with you. Mm-hmm. And today, um, that's not always the case because we get so many pitchy phone calls of call centers pitching one after another product or that even when you get like a phone call by a service provider that is meant, you know, to get to know you and to see if what they are offering is of value, Mm -hmm. that the customer mostly is impatient. And on the other hand, the person that's actually making the phone call um, as a professional, they use tactics where where it's just like, I call it amateur hour, uh, you know, in regards to holding conversations. It's literally, I had a few of those phone calls and I actually tell people off when, I'm, when I got them on the phone. So one person called me an assistant from one of the companies in the UK, from a big company, and ultimately it was like, well, wouldn't it be great if you were on TV or, you know, share the stage, virtual stage with other speakers? And I said, yeah, sure. And then straight away, it was, here is the, here are the plans, this is the deal. And it was like, so what are you willing to invest? What's your budget? And the problem that I have with that is like, well, first of all, tell me what is included in this that you're, that you're telling me about the packages. How will it benefit me? before you get to that point and what will be done prior to the event, what will be done after the event and what's the process, are there any commissions that I need to pay if I sell something or not? And nothing like that was discussed before that question came up, what's your budget? And this is one big mistake that I see happening over and over again. It drives me mad. Because you cannot, with your best conscience, sell your services without explaining the benefits and the features correctly. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing that, you're selling something that is not transparent. People have no idea what they're buying if they do say yes. And then at the end, it's ultimately like, well, you're paying for something and you really don't know if it is worth your while because of the time invested as well as as the money invested. Now, we're not talking about a, a, something that is only a few hundred dollars. We're talking about a few thousand, uh, you know, a few thousand pounds, anywhere from 3,000 to 10,000 pounds for a service like, you know, you're presenting on the virtual stage on a summit or being on a television show. And where I go, well, hang on, if it's a few hundred dollars to 10,000 or a few hundred pounds to 10,000 pounds, depending on which package, you need to know who you're talking to and what is best for them. And if you don't know, ask the right questions to get to know the person without asking the question, what is your budget? Those that are and what, you, right? what, what, what I do in, in situations like that, I've, I will actually listen in between the lines and I, when I'm selling something, and I'll say, look, this is what ultimately is of the most value to you. It might not be the one-to-one coaching with me. It might be group coaching or it might be another program. But b- before I even do that, I actually get to know the person because otherwise it's just like one after another pitch. Agreed. And I think that you really touched on a few really key points there, you know, talking about benefits and features You know, and I I completely agree with you, by the way. There are so many people that either go straight into either be email, phone call, 
text, me- whatever it is, whatever their form of communication is. And they talk about too much of the features of something and not, not enough about the benefits of why someone needs to invest in. You've also talked a lot about the importance of uh, relationships as well, you know, and uh, building up relationships with the person. So it kind of gets them excited, I suppose, in a way. So some good points there, you know, and this is a personal experience that I've, that I used to experience, not, not now, of course, hmm. but saying that you really used to really used to affect me, especially at the very beginning of my entrepreneurial journey is I used to get quite emotional when it comes to sales. And I'll tell you the reason why So, say, for example, uh, I don't know, I'd sit down with a client, right. And it all looked, you know, we got a lot of nodding heads, right. Not, in, <laughs> you've probably done this before, right. Many years ago. And at the end of it, hmm you thought all positive and, and then they turn around and they said no. And then you walked away and you scratch on your head thinking what went wrong there? And you get all emotional and, and things like that. But yeah. why is it that people get so emotional when it comes to sales? Well, because you got a personal attachment. Um, one thing is when you're selling your own service, uh, no matter what it is, you have an in, you know, you invested in that you created a program, you cre- you actually invested in what you put together, the people you worked with to get it there. And you think, you know, most likely this is the greatest invention since bread that you put this together. It's like, it's that kind of thing. So you're never objective in regards to your programs. You're always subjective and emotionally attached to it, which is one of the reasons why ideally you have people that are selling it for you. The problem is most people that are selling it on commission base only don't have the experience that you have. So therefore um, it takes them a long time to get to where it needs to be for them to close the sale in comparison to you because you are the expert you know exactly what you need what uh, the person needs what they want how to do it how to handle objection though the problem here is you personally invested and therefore when people say no or don't take action you take it personally instead of just looking at as a objective transaction to go you know what this person might not be ready right now and that's okay. And this is where you need to distance yourself. And on one hand, it's good when you're making the sales yourself because you also see where are the tweaks that I need to make in my own way of communicating to be more clear. So you practice that. So when you do actually outsource it to other people, you can actually tell them what not to do, what to avoid. So on the other hand, if you already know exactly where it needs to go and you are confident that it is the best thing to have, yeah. and you have a couple of people that are, ba- that are willing to promote it and, and sell it for you, then it's uh, easier when they do it and you basically just reward them for closing the sale because then you can just focus on your strength as a coach to do what you do best, which is coaching. Good point. Good point. I mean, I know that there a lot of our listeners are very, you know, they're entrepreneurs. Some of them are business owners. Some of them are in service driven businesses. Some of the product driven businesses. But I guess the fundamentals don't change, right? Look, every I mean, I shake my head when people um, say we don't need your service because we are doing well. It, I go, OK, great. Well, it's good that you do well. Uh, you can do even better. And uh, I don't understand why people don't want to do better. (laughs) So when people have that assumption because they do well, they don't need to do better, Mm -hmm. then I just shake my head and go, well, why not? I mean, this is my personal point of view is if you are already in the, you know, half a million mark or, you know, you're doing really well with your business, you're in a six, seven figure, they are always stumbling blocks. There are always things that you know you can do better you know, more responsive communication with your existing customers, understanding where your customers' complaints are so you can address them before they become an issue and they go to the competition. Mm. Looking at how can you be more transparent in leading your team and ultimately in doing so, improving the way that you use the CRM to, you know, to serve your customers. 
Mm. Also just having a communication strategy to build on trust, to get gain their loyalty so that they not only once purchase, but they purchase multiple times because that's where the money is in repeat transaction. Mm. And they refer more direct customers to you rather than you having to spend money on advertising. Yeah. And those are all things I just mentioned now that people that have a, a company that do does well, they struggle with. <laughs> they might not be uh, obvious to it. They might not even see it right now. But there are customers that are, that are on their books. They don't complain. They don't say anything. All they do is, you know, very quietly leave, just don't renew the contract or don't buy again and go to the competition. And you want to prevent that from happening. And the only way that you can prevent that from happening is through holding decent conversations that allow you to get to know your customer. And that is hardly done by anyone. Most companies have the automation system down with autoresponders, newsletters, and online chats. Yeah. yeah. Makes and sense. that's not the same as a decent conversation or in person on the phone or on Zoom, you know that. Absolutely. Um, I know that you call yourself the sales mind shifter, which is a really interesting, I suppose, title as such. But what have you found, you know, in your years of experience of, in the, I suppose, the sales arena, what do you think is the direct relationship or the links between sales and mindset you know, um, um, what it what is it that we need to do to improve our mindset, to inc- improve our sales? Oh, well, I mean, I already mentioned it before in, you know, it's the mindset is when it goes well, we don't need to do anything to do better. Right. Okay, that's the first sort of assumption of why should we fix what already goes well? Yeah. Well, my question would be to you, why not? optimize well to accelerate your growth personally and within your company. What's wrong with that? I'm sure there are things that could be better within every company, within your tra- you know, communication, mm-hmm. attitude, mindset, and all of that, that goes without saying. And the second thing is people that have, that do make uh, not enough, just get by their mindset is I don't like sales. I'm not a salesperson. I don't want to be a salesperson. I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to do hardcore selling. So those, those are like limiting mindset beliefs, so, so to speaking, their belief system on a, on a subconscious level is literally telling them as soon as they pick up the phone or they, they lead their team that uh, what if I'm not good enough? What if we are just doing the hard sell? And what if we uh, get complaints or pe- we disturb people? So all those things fire up on a negative mindset, mm-hmm. which ultimately compromises their self-confidence and the person on the other end hears that. Yeah. Um, or in the meeting, they see that if they're on a Zoom meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is those people that are really good at sales, they have the feeling that they're overconfident. Well, I can, you know, sell ice to the Eskimos. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm the hero. I'm the superstar. I can sell to anyone. And as long as I sell well, I don't care about the customer. So there is that mindset that as long as the numbers are right, we don't need to care about the customer in that sense because once we have them, that's the main thing. Yeah. And that's the that's the other problem that we have here. And so there needs to be a change of attitude to say, how can we serve the customer and sell more? rather than sell more and then worry about serving the customer. Yeah. And that's the, that's directly related to customers buying stuff and then complaining about it later on because of customer care is not uh, on point. The sales told them something that isn't correct. They're oversold it. Instead of telling the truth, they just they made up some, you know, some stuff that isn't fully, you know, fully honest. So they, they're just telling what the customer wants to hear. 
leave certain things out. And so there is a miscommunication happening straight away. And as a result, that is because of the mindset of the salesperson, because they get paid on commission. Mm. So therefore, they will tell the customer whatever the customer wants to hear in order to close the sale. Mm. Makes sense. So those are three examples on how the mindset has a direct, is a direct relation to the way that we are selling and leading in sales. Yeah, very good. Quick question, actually, and this is kind of more to do with, I don't know if there's a common myth, but I suppose introverted and extroverted people, like, I, th- I think the, I suppose, I don't know if this it's a myth like I mentioned to you, but is there do extroverts sell more than introverts and vice versa? And, you know, uh, yeah, I'd love to know what your opinion is about this, first of all. And secondly, you know, if you are an introvert, how can you improve your sales conversion? And if you're an extrovert, how can you improve your sales conversion? It's not introvert, extrovert is your uh, predominant personality type. Mm. It does not, it does not mean you're better or worse in making sales because what sales has to do with is your behavior Mm. and and your adaptability and the way that you are communicating with the the person that's on the other end. Mm. And let's say you are uh, an introvert and you're speaking with a person that is an extrovert on the other end. Yeah. Now, if you're an introvert and you're not, you don't yet have the skill set to adapt your personality traits in regards to adjusting your behavior, mm-hmm. then the conversation will be led by the extrovert because you as the introvert will retrieve and let them literally take the lead, which is not good. So what the introvert needs to do in that case is literally become almost like modify their behavior to be more extrovert, which most salespeople that have experience know how to do that. They do it automatically. They might not even be aware of it. They just do it. And those that are not experienced, they don't do it. And then ultimately, they're not going to make sales in a sense. But the same can happen the other way around. So let's say you are an extrovert. Yeah. And I would, you know, I would... Say, for instance, as an example, I would assume from knowing you that you are more of an extrovert than an introvert. Am I correct? I'm more of a, I don't know. I think for me, I, I think I see myself as more of an extrovert, but yeah, I don't know. Exactly. I'm, I, I guess but, I'm a I mean, hybrid. <laughs> yeah. So you, you're more of an extrovert than I am, for instance. I'm more of an introvert. So this means, though, when let's say, an extrovert makes a phone call to an introvert. If the extrovert over dominates the person that's an introvert and the introvert is not comfortable, but they don't say it because they're an introvert, then again, the same thing can happen. They will retrieve in themselves. So therefore, what will happen is the extrovert will keep on telling them all the great benefits Mm. and so on and blah, blah, blah. They will have a great conversation with themselves. Yeah. Because what the introvert will say is, yes, 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 I will think about it, but because the introvert has not yet come out of their shell. Yeah. So meaning in that way, the extrovert missed the mark in connecting the introvert to make them feel comfortable, to get them out of their shell, to be, become more extrovert. Mm-hmm. So this is where it's a skill ultimately that needs to be practiced and learn how to because even the extrovert doesn't mean that they're selling more. So if you got two extroverts, then they just talk over each other if, if no one is actually listening. Yeah. And that is bad just as well. So what needs to happen with the extrovert, for instance, when they talk to an introvert, they need to slow down their own pace and really be sensitive in the way that they speak, in the way that they listen to the person, give them the the breathing space to answer and come, you know, change their pace and tonality to modify and mirror what the other person is is giving them so that the other person that's an introvert feels comfortable enough to open up and become more extrovert. And that's a skill to be learned. Not everybody has that. And this is one reason why I say to people, this is why it's good for, 
having a mentor and coach like myself. So, because when I hear out where you're at, then I can actually give you tips on how to adjust that so you can then practice that during your con- conversations. Yeah. And I think you really highlighted a really good point there because uh, you were talking about the importance of mirroring and, and you mentioned about adaptability. You know, um, essentially, if you're, and you, we use the example of the introvert and the extrovert, which I think is a really good point there you've made about the mirroring and stuff like that. The other thing I wanted to ask you, because the sales is such a massive subject. We could talk about this for hours, couldn't we? Objections, right? I know that um, there are lots of different ways to overcome objections. You know, if you're dealing with a client or a customer or whatever it is, are there, what are the most common objections and what do you, what are the, what, I suppose that's the first question. And the second part of that question is, is how do we deal about overcoming objections? Well, I mean, the most common objections is I don't have time. Uh, I can't afford it. Uh, What if this isn't for me? What if it works for others, but not for me? What if I don't have the time to do what I need to do? Or how do I know ultimately that I can do this myself, you know, so the common, you know, or like money is quite often an objection, like I can't afford it or I don't want to, I don't want to spend that much money or time. And depending on what it is, ultimately, those are the like money, time, and will it work for me or not work for me kind of like is that those are the general uh, objections why people need social proof for instance is because they want to be able to relate to it and go oh yeah I'm that person um, if if it works for that person it might also work for me money then you can say look if it's too expensive if I were to be able to do a payment plan for you would you go ahead with it right now mm-hmm. and if they go yes then you go okay great well this is the payment plan that we can do for you and then the question is, what is your budget? What can you invest in yourself? When it gets to that point where people go, well, I can't afford it. You know, if you're pitching something and then they go, well, it's too much. I can't afford it. Then you can say, so what could you afford? Mm. How much is it that you can afford on a monthly or yearly basis if you were to invest in yourself? Yeah. If they then give you an outline, then it's justified. You know, what I see happening is preempting objections and, and trying to do that straight away. I understand why people do that because they don't want to waste time. The problem is if you are in a conversation with me five minutes into it and you're asking how much can you afford or in, I'm not comfortable talking about money that early. I don't know you. So why should I tell you that? You know? What do you need that information for? Whereas if you were to be in a conversation for 20 minutes and we get to the point where now we know the solution, we can offer a solution, and then the money comes up, then it's a totally different ballgame. Because now I actually know that the money that the person is asking is for a program and a service. Mm. And therefore, I'm more willing to open up and talk about that because I want to actually be able to do it. So therefore I want to actually talk about how can I do it if it is more expensive for me to make it affordable. Time is a thing where people have the illusion of time that they don't have enough. Whereas we all have enough time. It's just a matter of when do you make the time available to make changes happening? We all know that changes do not happen overnight. So therefore, if you are not happy with the results you got or you want to optimize the results you got, then you need to invest time and money to make that happen and make a commitment to it. So therefore, good question is, what's priority in your life right now? Mm. You know, because let me ask you this. If you were to have a sales coach like myself, what would, what's the reason that that's important for you right now? And if it's not, then, then of course, then we, we don't even need to continue the conversation. But if it is because you want to learn how to handle objections better, how to close more sales, how to be a leader and um, lead your team more efficiently to get more repeat sales, retain your existing customers and get more direct referrals rather than you spending thousands of pounds on, on 
advertising and marketing every month mm. and let's say you're spending maybe between three to ten thousand uh, pounds a month on advertising so the worth of that value of having to save on that could be anywhere between 40 to 100,000 pounds per year. Mm -hmm. So, which none of my programs are that expensive. So therefore money is no objection here. So it's more the question, is it a priority number one for you to change that so you can convert more customer, you know, more prospects into new customers mm -hmm. and, and get the existing customers to spend more money with you and refer more direct clients to you so you don't need to spend money on advertising as much as you do right now and if the answer is yes then the, the, the next question is when do you want to get started and would you prefer group coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching mm -hmm. or would you prefer something where you learn from me every month on a topic on a life masterclass and that's it um depending on how um, intensive you want it to be, then I would say, look, if you really want to accelerate, one-to-one -one coaching is the best. The second best is group coaching. And the third best is uh, attending life masterclasses. Mm -hmm. But the one-on-one -on -one is best because it's personalized towards what it is that you need to work on mostly. So it's very personalized service. So whatever you then get from it, you can then apply with your team and yourself. And therefore you will get the biggest results from it ultimately. Very good. I was going to say, I'm conscious of time, but uh, I wanted to, I suppose my last question really is all about, you know, what is it that you're working on right now? Well, I'm actually, I just rebranded my services, put it this way. And what I'm working on right now is I'm offering 10 um, small business owners, entrepreneurs to actually be part of a group coaching program that allows them to get twice a month group coaching sessions plus also have some uh, some one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions included. I think it's two or three that are included in that so that they get, you know, in the beginning uh, an intense one-on-one -on -one session with me and then after three months, another one-on-one. -on -one. And during each month, we will I will actually coach them on generating new customers and how to actually make the packaging and service, how to word it and communicate it in such a way that it's more attractive to the listener and um, for them to want to work with them. So they see and understand the value more. And during the second part of the six months, they will learn how to retain their existing customers, increase the repeat sales. And again, look at how can I handle any objection that comes my way with existing customers to get them to understand the value of it so that they, you know, that they buy again and also refer new customers so that they don't need to invest a lot of marketing money and that sort of thing. So that's what I'm working on right now. So I'm launching that. It is limited to 10 people. And uh, there's a reason. I, I mean, I've done other coaching, group coaching programs. And I'm just, uh, when I see that big names are like literally making group coaching programs with hundred more people, I get really, I get upset because it's undervalued. Mm -hmm. You know, group coaching should always be in such a way done that every person within that group has the ability to ask questions and be you know, be coached and learn from the coach and mentor straight away in, during the live coaching session. So it should never be more than 10 people in one group because you just don't have the time to answer questions of more than, more than that. And then the value isn't given ultimately because with 10 people, you, you're pretty good in delivering the value because most of those people in the group will have similar issues but even if one or the other has, has an individual issue, can still address it. And yet everybody that's listening in can benefit from it. Awesome. Very cool. So guys, if you, um, if you have an interest in uh, Dario's program, do me a favor and click on the link below. Uh, you can find out a bit more information that will send you to uh, Dario's, uh, I suppose, landing page as such, give you a bit more information. And I'm sure that 
If you reach out to him on LinkedIn or Facebook, I'm sure that if you mention this podcast, of course, uh, he'll be able to uh, link you guys up and you'll be like, oh, okay, you come from the podcast. Great, fantastic. So it's always good to give you a big shout out. So Daryl, just want to say thanks very much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not a problem. Look, I mean, when you go uh, through the link that I'm sharing with you, for everybody you will be able to go through the landing page, be able to get um, a chapter of my book so you can read that. And then ultimately there are three offers that you ultimately get. One is the online program that is a very low investment, which is a seven-day sales mind shifter challenge course with one year membership access plus additional training. The second one is the mentorship program, which is a one-year mentorship program, half price where once a month I'm doing live master classes. And the third one with application is the group coaching. So if on the other hand, you listen to this podcast and you go, I want to do the group coaching, um, let me know. And then we can arrange a Zoom call and I can talk to you more about it. So you don't need to go through all of those steps if that's the only thing that you're interested in. Cool. Sounds good. So guys, hope you've got some great tips from um, from uh, our podcast today. If you have any questions, again, reach out to Dario, connect with him on uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, connect with him, say hi, uh, use the hashtag Game Changers Experience as well. And I hope you've enjoyed today. We'll see you on the next Game Changers Experience for the next show. Take care. See you soon. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, you guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening in to this episode of the Game Changers Experience. I hope that you got some amazing value, some great insights and golden nuggets that you can implement into your business straight away. I would really, really appreciate it if you could leave a five-star review on the button below. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.